So here's a straightforward question. What color are the strawberries in this photograph? They're red, right? Wrong. Those strawberries are gray. If you don't believe me, we look for one of the reddest looking patches on this image, cut it out. Now, what color is that? It's gray, right? But when you put it back on the image, it's red again. It's weird, right? This illusion was created by a Japanese researcher named Akiyoshi Kiraoka, and it hinges on something called color constancy. It's an incredible visual phenomenon by which the color of an object appears to stay more or less the same, regardless of the lighting conditions under which you see it, or the lighting conditions under which your brain thinks you're seeing it. To explain how color constancy works, we're going to be looking at a whole bunch of visual illusions that mess with the way you perceive color. Illusions like this one. Can you tell which of the squares on the left is the same color as a square on the right? It's probably not the ones you think. To help us out, we called up David Eagleman. He's a neuroscientist at Stanford and an expert in visual illusions. You might remember him from our previous episode. That looks so cool! <laughs> We invited him to Wired's offices in San Francisco to spend the day running some experiments. What is color constancy? Um, the brain wants to see an object as a particular color all the time, irrespective of what the lighting condition is. Light has a lot to do with how you perceive color, in large part because light itself can be color. Tungsten light, named for the filament inside of incandescent bulbs, is orange. And the color of daylight can vary dramatically, from bluish white at midday to vibrant reds and yellows and oranges at sunset. So for example, we were just outside and I was holding a white coffee cup and it looks white to you. And now inside with totally different lighting conditions, it still looks white to you. Even though what's actually hitting your eyes is different in the lighting, because of what's called the illuminant that comes and reflects off of this, what actually hits you is very different in these cases. And this would look white to you if we were under tungsten or fluorescent or an incandescent bulb. That's what color constancy is. So what's going on with that picture of the strawberries? To find out, we worked with an artist named Reina Takahashi to create some paper strawberries and put them under different lights. This looks kind of like midday, midday sun. It's this very, very bright, clear, kind of white color. Yep. And this is a much more yellow. This is clearly just like a tungsten light. So what happens if we move these okay, into the so light? Let's try this. Okay. They do look slightly different, but, but they remain red, even though the, what's called the illuminant is, is quite different on them. Now there's something interesting going on here. You can rationally recognize that these objects are different colors, but your brain still classifies both groupings of strawberries as red. Which brings us back to Kitaoka's photo. You might have noticed it has a kind of blue-green overlay to it. Researchers think that your visual system perceives that overlay as the color of the light that's hitting the strawberries. And it corrects for that light by subtracting it from the actual physical gray color of the pixels in the image. And this causes you to perceive the berries as red. So check this out. We have some filters here that, like the overlay on the strawberry photo, is blue-green, which is opposite red on the color spectrum. And that means that if you use these filters to cover up our camera lens, it actually blocks red light. So if we now point our camera at these red objects, the pixels on your computer screen are technically gray, but to you, these objects probably still look red. That's what color constancy is, is the brain always trying to say, what is that actual, what is that object actually in the world? So with that said, you might think that the reason these strawberries look red to you is because you know strawberries are supposed to be red. And while researchers think that might be part of why this illusion is so compelling, it's not the whole story. And here's how we know that. These objects we just showed you, unlike with strawberries, you have no prior memory as to what color this kind of object should or shouldn't be. And yet, when we filter our lens to block the red light, they still look red to you. Which, when you think about it, is a pretty amazing feature of human vision and the brain. Except there are also illusions that can leverage that very feature against you. Okay. So this is the painting. It's uh, by an artist named James Gurney. Sure. You've seen this? Yeah, not that painting, but the sort of illusion. Yeah. Okay, so you're familiar with the conceit. My guess is that even though it looks like this is under green light and that's under red light, that 
the physical paint in one of these squares, one of these squares is the same, and yet they look totally different under these two conditions. Right, exactly. And it's interesting you say light, because that's the condition we're just coming from, identical object under slightly different light. And that is, by appearances, what looks like it's going on here. You've got an identical cube under what looks like a kind of greenish light and under a kind of reddish light. But in fact, it's actually entirely different colors of paint. But to the brain, maybe it doesn't matter? That, that's exactly, it doesn't okay. matter because it's just what hits your retina. And usually what hits your retina, your brain tries to figure out what is the illuminant that's hitting that and reflecting, but it doesn't matter. You can just cheat it so at the end it's all coming off and hitting your retina this way. Right. To help us illustrate what's going on here, we wanted to bring the painting into the real world and make it human-sized. So our team built this giant version out of paper. Okay, so we've done our best to reproduce Gurney's painting in the real world. How's that, Juno? Good. Good? Instead of using paint, what we've used is construction paper. And interestingly, one of the pieces of construction paper there is exactly the same color as one of the pieces here. Okay, and so when I look at this from where I'm standing, this upper right cube looks the same color as that upper right cube. And this lower right cube looks the same color as that lower right cube. But that's not the match. Yeah, so the matching squares are actually this one on the lower right and this one on the top here. So let's go ahead and prove that, which we can't do in the painting, but we can do physically like this. Okay, so you can see that this is exactly the same color of construction paper here. <laughs> and that is, yeah, that is 100% the same piece of paper. <laughs> so if we put it back over there, the key is that because this side of the world appears to be bathed in a green illuminant and this is in a red illuminant, they end up looking quite different because the way your brain judges the color has to do with all the surrounding colors as well as the illuminant around. And so what your brain serves up to you can be completely different uh, than what is actually physically hitting your retina. Okay, so here's my question. Is this happening in my eye or is it happening in my brain? Ah, good question. That has been debated in the literature since the beginning of these sorts of illusions. And the answer is it's both. There's lots of stuff happening at the level of the eye, all the way back to your brain making what are called unconscious inferences about the world. In other words, it's guesses about the world based on its prior assumptions. And so there's things happening at all these different levels. Your brain takes into, a f into account the context all around and then serves up some story about what it thinks the color is based on what is most useful. Right, because if your brain was a complete literalist, it would have no problem telling that that square and that square are the exact same color. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so for me, this raises the inevitable question that every college student has you know, postulated in their dorm room, which is like, how do I know that the color I see is the same color you see? Right, actually, you, you can't know that. We don't know that. Um, your mother taught you to call this green, and my mother taught me to call this green, so we can transact and negotiate in the outside world, and I can say, pass the green thing, and you can do it. But our internal experience, we don't know if it's the same thing on the inside or not. And in fact, one of the things that's been surfacing lately on the internet a lot are illusions where we can actually demonstrate that people are having slightly different perceptions of what's going on. Like the dress. Like the dress. You remember the dress, right? Of course you remember the dress. Everybody remembers the dress, the viral internet sensation that divided the internet back in 2015. Some people saw it as blue and black, other people saw it as white and gold. Still drives people up the wall. So which camp is right? Well, the short answer is neither. The actual pixels in the image are blue and brown. But the full answer is a bit more complicated. Scientists still aren't sure why two people can see the dress so differently, but a popular hypothesis is that the colors you see depend on how your brain interprets the light hitting the dress. If your brain thinks the light falling on the dress is blue, it subtracts that color from the pixels in the image, and you're more likely to see gold and white. Conversely, if your brain thinks the light falling on the dress is more yellow in hue, it subtracts yellow from the pixels, and you're more likely to see blue and black. In other words, the colors you see depend on whether you attribute the blue in the image to the dress or the light falling on it. And believe it or not, this isn't the only time the internet has been divided over the color of a piece of clothing. A couple years after the dress, this photo of a shoe went viral for the same reason. Some people see it as gray and teal, while others see it as pink and white. Okay, so then I feel like the really big question then is, do you think it would be possible for us to physically reproduce one of those ambiguous illusions. I think we could tweak the lighting. The difficulty is knowing 
we'll see it in just one way. And the question is, <laughs> how do you test it? <laughs> if, if we don't see it opposite ways, how do we know we've captured it? Well, we'll have to find some other people and ask a bunch of people. And if some people say it's one way and some people say the other way, then we've reproduced it. Right. Yeah. Well, let's give it a shot. All right. Let's okay, try. Good. All right. <laughs> so we set about applying everything we learned up to that point. We knew that our brains would try to correct for the color of light hitting the shoes, and we also hypothesized that the more ambiguous that lighting was, the more ambiguous the color of the shoe would ultimately be. We tried using gels and different kinds of lights, and we tried mixing up what was in the background of the image, all to make it harder for our brains to determine what color light was falling on the shoe. But we couldn't quite get the colors right straight out of the camera, so Juno took our picture into Photoshop to shift the hues around, and it worked. At least, it did for us. So to see if lots of other people would see it differently, we asked folks around the office. Yeah, gray and teal. It's pink and white, obviously. Gray and teal, definitely. It's pink and white. It's pink and white. Those are gray and seafoam green. Pink and white. I think it's gray and teal. What? Mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Remember we called this an ambiguous illusion? Well, that's partly because different people see it differently, but it's also in part because for some people, it switches back and forth. Wait, can I, can I actually? Yeah. Okay. Well, now it looks kind of pink and white. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> You're looking like... away. Say again, what you, what true tone, we turn true tone off. Okay, so now it looks pink and white to me. I see pink. So the color changed in the last like 20, like 15 seconds? In a sense, Jay, it did. If you don't believe us, we've posted some links in the show notes below that might help you see the other colors. The fact is, there is a lot we don't understand about color, which might seem strange because color is such a fundamental part of our lives, but it wasn't just the internet that flipped out over the dress and the shoe. It was scientists, too. Before the dress, researchers had never observed such stark differences of opinion over the color of an object, and they're still not entirely sure why those differences exist. Everybody's brain is a little bit different, so if you come to the table with different expectations about what you're seeing, you'll see it differently. One of the theories about the dress is that how you see it might have to do with whether you're an early riser or a night owl. The idea is that people who stay up late are more likely to perceive the dress as blue because they spend more time seeing things in artificial yellow light. Whereas early risers are more likely to perceive the dress as white and gold because they spend more time observing objects under natural bluish light. Color adds this layer of information to your perception of the world, allowing you to distinguish between objects and react quickly in a variety of situations. Most of the time, you don't even think about all the work your visual system does to serve you that information. But every once in a while, an illusion like the dress or the shoes or Kitaoka strawberries comes along to remind you of all the things your brain takes care of under the hood. Which is pretty amazing, right?